All right, everyone, mindful of time. So uh, the last topic I was gonna cover is homelessness, and thanks, guys. Uh, particularly, there's been some publicity around Mark Drive of late, so answer any questions you have. Uh, maybe real quickly, in a couple minutes, just to set the stage, um, uh, we all know homelessness is a huge issue, not only here in our uh, community, but really Bay Area-wide, nationwide right now. Uh, it's a complex issue uh, involving a lot of different situations. Um, one thing I've emphasized, and, and particularly my district, by the way, which includes downtown uh, San Rafael as well as North San Rafael, uh, so one thing I've uh, really emphasize while being in office. This is a county-wide issue. Uh, it's something we all have to address, not just San Rafael. So, um, particular issues that um, I feel the county owns, uh, if you will, uh, are the mental health system. And since I've been in office, we've actually increased uh, the county mental health budget by about $10 million. It's now $59 million. The key, that's a chunk of change. And the key is going to be to make sure we're spending that money wisely, particularly vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the mentally ill and the homeless population, which is a huge uh, part of the issue along with substance abuse. Another piece is the criminal justice system. I think right now we're actually in a situation where oftentimes we're faced with a revolving door. Uh, we have people walking our streets um, with severe issues, um, and too often uh, they're uh, in the back of an ambulance or a police car, they go to jail, they're back on the street, they're back in the ambulance, they're back in the Scar. Uh, so what I'm doing is actually convening uh, the key people that need to be in the room in terms of that broken system, if you will. And that includes uh, the DA, the public defender, uh, sheriff, police, uh, service providers, etc. And another key piece, and, and I think we're making strides in this regard, is this is really a situation where jurisdictions have to cooperate with each other. Again, this is not a San Rafael only situation. It's the county working closely with San Rafael and with other jurisdictions around the county. I think you are seeing that more and more now. And ultimately, all of us are going to have to step up and do that. So one big issue right now downtown is um, the intensity of services, uh, the growing homeless population, and impacts on neighborhoods in downtown. Uh, much of this is focused on Ritter Center, which is a uh, service provider that provides very essential services, along with other service providers uh, such as St. Vincent's. But the issue is, um, and it's been uh, going on for some time, Ritter has outgrown its space, uh, perhaps because of a situation uh, where Ritter is downtown, other services are downtown. Uh, the cumulative impact uh, is of concern right now. So the city has been working with Ritter uh, through the auspices of its use permit to address that issue. Um, what is the best way to deliver services in a way that balances uh, everyone's needs and concerns? So, uh, John, feel free to chime in here, but as of Monday night, uh, the council took the step of agreeing with Ritter to negotiate a memorandum of understanding where some of the services currently provided by Ritter will be relocated elsewhere. Primarily the mail service, uh, food, and showers. Um, in my view, the county also needs to be a leader. Again, going back to we're all in this together, 
on the county's unique role uh, vis-a-vis a lot of what we're talking about. Uh, so we are uh, going to be working with the city. Um, one uh, example uh, in the case of showers is uh, perhaps mobile showers, going to where folks are, whether it's in southern Marin, uh, central Marin. Um, as we all know, there are some uh, uh, services up in Nevada as well. Uh, so that's one piece. Ultimately, there's also an issue of uh, should Ritter be relocated, and if so, where? And what combination of services should be in that new location? So one uh, potential idea emerging, and we're looking at a lot of different examples, um, how other communities are addressing these issues. Uh, for example, there's a... Um, uh, in Palo Alto, an example called the Opportunity House, uh, or Opportunity Center, which has a combination of uh, a multi-use day center, uh, where you have job training, uh, you have case management, uh, connection to services, and then permanent supportive housing. Uh, there's another example up in Petaluma. What are the best practices? So one potential issue is whether it makes sense, rather than to have uh, a lot of these services concentrated yet scattered uh, near downtown, uh, to find a suitable site for a multi-use center of some fashion. A number of different sites are being looked at by Ritter, by the city, and again, uh, the county is involved, as I think we should be along with other uh, possible service providers. Uh, it's tough. I mean, there's, there's um, not many sites around, in many cases, uh, where some have been pursued, like, uh, for example, one that comes up a lot, and I've seen this on social media, uh, what about Marin Square, which is down by Bell? And, uh, that site, which I think actually would be good, uh, pretty central, um, near transit, uh, is owned by Sutter Health. Uh, and their, their plans are very much up in the air. So they're not willing to sell or lease right now. Uh, hey, hey uh, Joe. Good to see you. Good to see you. Uh, so you mentioned earlier about talking about balancing the needs and concerns yes. of everybody involved. Yes. Uh, so I'm wondering how far along is the process in terms of choosing a location to, if, if it's going to happen out of Central San Rafael, yeah. or expand from Central San Rafael. Right. And then secondly, what's, what's the logic from the standpoint of the needs of the people who need the homeless uh, uh, assistance to put them in a lo location like Mark Drive, where it seems to me that that's pretty remote. Uh, as far as a you know, central transit right. um, alternative. Yeah. So I guess I'm throwing in a couple of questions there. Yeah, One, yeah. Where, where are we in the process? Yeah. Two, uh, what is the um, uh, system so far for balancing the needs and concerns? Yes. Because the only thing I've heard about is through next door and rent. Right. Um, <laughs> and that's such a reliable source of information. <laughs> yeah. It's actually well, good. It serves a purpose. You know, and, and, and my dad I just recently signed on to that. Yeah. And this is my first meeting in a long time. That's right. Really more, but well, it seems like it, there are a lot of people who have a lot of questions. Yes. And would like to have input. Absolutely. So I, I'm throwing three or four questions at you. No, I'll get it, John. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, and let me just preface it, going back to the point I made uh, at the beginning of the meeting. The way I operate is there's community input and dialogue at every step of the way. And decisions as big as where to put services, doubly so. And, and by the way, next door, I get reports of, it, it's actually helpful. I, I, one one um, uh, particularly noteworthy comment I heard, it, it, along the line, it encapsulates a couple of your questions. It's like, 
if, if, if we have services in one area and there's, let's say, issues or impacts, what value is there to simply moving that two freeway exits up, right? So unpacking that, um, first of all, to answer your, your main question, we're very early in the process. Yes, you said I read about a memorandum of understanding when I see something like that. That yeah. to me gets my attention because good, that means good. it's pretty far along. No. So yeah. remember what that involves. It's without a lot of input, it seems, from a lot of people in the area. Okay, so remember what the MOU covers because I, I think it is actually a good first step. It's only going to address food, showers, and mail. Okay? So that's, in my view, separate from the issue of are we going to physically relocate Ritter 1? Two, if so, and, and by the way, I think there are a lot of rationales for, for relocating Ritter. Two, um, in the new location, will there be a co-location of other services, i.e. some sort of multi-use center that may include a food piece, uh, case management, job training, etc. So that's another big decision point. We're early in the process. Um, there's no location that's been identified that would meet the needs. And by the way, I, I think you touched on a couple of other really key points. Anywhere services are located, there has to be a concern, um, is it safe? Are there controls? Is it actually meeting the objectives of providing effective services? Um, is it near transit? Are there unacceptable impacts on neighborhoods? And, you know, I would put it this way. Not only is it a situation where, you know, we should get community input. I, I personally am counting on it. Again, I, I think this type of problem rises to a level where we're all in this together. We all have to be coming to the table with ideas, uh, et cetera. So, um, notwithstanding anything you've heard on Next Door or in the press, although I think the press kind of uh, corrected. Uh, some perceptions. Um, uh, there's been no agreement. There is no uh, process underway. There's discussions. Um, uh, there are some other sites uh, as well. Uh, what, what, what is the best way to stay on top of it in terms of information? So, um, Obviously, I will putting out. I'll be continually putting out information. Um, uh, we Andrew Henning's blog is that you can subscribe to. Say that again. Andrew Henning's blog that you can he yeah. keeps updating that weekly. Um, to uh, he's Andrew Henning is the new gentleman that the city of Santa Fe hired. Oh, um, yeah, we're working. Friends. We're working closely uh, with with Santa Fe on this. So one other thing, and then I'm going to open it up to questions. Another piece is the REST program. Okay, so that's the Rotating Emergency Shelter. Uh, a great program. Uh, right now, that rotates among congregations throughout Marin County. Um, it's very, very highly regarded. Um, the REST program, and it's administered through St. Vincent's, which also does a soup kitchen downtown. Uh, and the Marin Organizing Committee, which is a, a group of congregations, uh, is stating that they're no longer willing to do it after a couple more years. Uh, they have, they've been doing it uh, for a few years now. Um, <clears throat> that's what, something we're considering. Um, again, though, here's my view right now. I think if you're talking about um, taking all the services of Ritter, and again, maybe we have to uh, reimagine, rather than getting fixated on what Ritter is now, uh, maybe with the MOU, with some other uh, policy decisions, that looks different. Um, 
But as things stand, if you're looking to um, have the whole rest program, all a Ritter, all a St. Vincent, all in one location, um, that, that's a big situation. Um, I personally am nowhere near that right now in terms of decision making. So, um, arrest is an issue out there. Um, one final piece, that's the emergency shelter situation. Uh, the ultimate uh, policy solution um, uh, to what most people are saying now is we also have to look at permanent supportive housing. Um, that is another county issue, and that has to be looked at countywide. Okay, so those are just some parameters. Justin and then Carol. So, just to be clear, because I, I, I think my understanding of this is that the IJ kind of got ahead of himself with what they initially Correct. So, it, to me it seems like what you're saying is that the, the, the combination or parts of the service, you have not expressed support for those at 67 Mark Drive, correct? What I'm saying is, um, and, and what was reported is somehow full rest, full redder, as, as, as now conceptualized, yeah, all being put there without even getting into an analysis of what makes sense. Or um, the process. I, yeah, or the process, <laughs> or, or uh, you know, interacting with the community, um, or, or evaluating. Um, all the parameters I just talked about. Yeah. So yes, that, that's absolutely right. And, and just a follow-up question: is, is there investigation into a potential site in in, in an area that, that I would that I would think would, would fit the needs of, of this well, but then also be in an area that essentially void of an existing residential community? Is the area you know past the Target Home Depot along the 580 North? Um, on your way out to the Richmond Bridge. It seems like that's a fairly industrial area that's comparable to where you know, they're wanting to be south of Smooth Barrens Road, but that's just not surrounded by existing communities. Yeah, um, I have not heard, I think out there, there might be a potential for a smaller um, site. So yeah, I mean, it could be part, um, but again, a lot of it, depends on what's available, uh, who's willing to uh, negotiate. Um, we were looking at another site, Windward Way, which is very near the Health and Wellness Center. Uh, it's multiple parcels. Um, well, it seems like that area would be much more accessible to Central Center well, Valley, if that's right. what you're yeah. trying to accomplish. Again, is there a willing owner, is there, yeah, so it's, it's all so, the, all the, and, and also, again, what, what makes sense to co-locate where, et cetera. So it's, it's yeah. Count. It's, it's complex, like in this journal yeah. uh, letter. Um, the first criteria, I had trouble when I met with the city understanding the established criteria that city employees are now working on uh, at the behest of the mayor to help these organizations find new locations. So our tax dollars are being, and time is being taken away from planning and other things in order to See if they can't get a little traction on, on this question. So I think that's in part. The other piece is they were, they were working to evaluate um, existing uh, services at current Ritter impacts, oh. and then you have the result. And okay. Move so I was just speaking area. to the planning staff has been tasked <coughs> to help and the planning. The that's my understanding start. as well. But my my it's really um, just one person. It's really just rough. Oh, it's Rafi? It's, it's, okay. it's not a whole staff, and most of the stuff is being done by volunteers on the city council, like myself. Oh my gosh. Well, into city resources to do um, that. I did not, my background is real estate for a gajillion years, including corporate real estate. I got to build Pacific Bell Park. By the way, it's been renamed. I know there's some sports fans here. Pacific Bell Park has been renamed. It's Willie Mays Field. We're all done with the phone company. So, <laughs> meanwhile, Phone company or what? Meanwhile, um, at the very top of the list in the order of human need is safety, and you, you spoke to that. Correct. Thank you for it. I want to take it one deeper. The site at Mark Drive is on land subject to very high liquefaction 
and that's old construction, so if it's tilt up concrete that I think it is, it's going to fall down and it's going to sink into the ground and it backs to a creek. And it's also downstream of a toxic site that was never cleaned. So putting the people with the fewest resources at the highest risk makes no sense to me, and much less the um, lovely people doing their best to help. These are not safe, look, that's not a safe location for human habitation, for 24-hour occupancy, um, for uh, earthquake safety, among other things. So if that could just float right to the top of, let's not put these people in unsafe locations. Damien, um, if, I, if, I, if I could, yeah, just, just, just so you understand it, as Damien very clearly put, this is it's very early in the process, regardless of what is printed in the IGA. Um, the, any property that, that Ritter or any other entity wants to access or move to is a private party transaction. The city, the, the city is not brokering a deal, the county is not brokering a deal between a buyer and a seller. Where the city and the county holds, depending upon where this transaction and where we our input will be as on use permitted zone. So, you know, we're getting very far in front of ourselves. And yes, it got out there that the Mark Drive was a potential site because for those of you who know in the commercial property, Mark Drive has been for sale for about seven years. Um, it's 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 a property, it's like many others that they've looked for. Um, that they said, hey, could this work? It's 20,000 square feet. Could they co-locate things there? Before they would enter into any agreement to purchase um, the property, if they're any sort of business savvy, they're going to make sure that the uses that they want to go there are going to be approved and compatible for that site, which means they have to go through the process of making an application for uses and zoning at that part, which would go through our planning department, um, and that would go through certain steps, and they would probably enter into a, an option to buy pending the approval of those certain services, because no one would want to buy a property and then show up and then the city come back and say, I'm mm, sorry, you can't do that yeah. there. It's, it's reassuring to hear that, but I think the reason that a lot of people get a little touchy in this particular <coughs> area is that for some reason this corridor this oh, sure. area where we live seems to be the path of least resistance. Sure. Well, uh, in Georgia, judging, in judging, from the, judging from the input that I get, I'm sure David gets, it, it's not very least resistance that, that we're hearing for, which is great because the community does need to provide input on that. Um, I myself, um, I, li I literally, I see Mark Drive from my balcony. So it's, it's, I'm right on the other side of Wasclings Creek there. So it's, it's, I see it, it's, it's there. Um, I'm not making judgment. And I'm any, yeah, and they're not making judgment any one way or another. And what I want to make sure you guys understand that this is a process, and it is not going to happen overnight. And whether or not Mark Drive is even a feasible option for certain things, we don't know. There has not been an offer made. There has not been a, a you know a, a, a counter offer by the buyer and the seller on this property. It is one of many, and I would say many, one of several that, that they're looking at. They're looking at, you know, Windward Drive, as Damon mentioned, you know, looking at pieces down by, you know, off of 580. It is a difficult piece for an entity like Ritter or St. Vincent's to find. They've indicated the willingness to move St. Vincent's has. St. Vincent's has said, you know, if there is a turnkey operation that serves their clientele, that could make sense for them to move yeah. away from downtown as well. But finding those locations is the challenge. Well, challenge. somewhat reassuring. I'm going to triangulate comments here. And Damon's saying, you know, talk, you've got to talk about needs and concerns. Right. Justin's comment about what about process. Mm -hmm. And then your comment is about, you know, things that I would never even thought of, which is the liquefaction issue and mm -hmm. the uh, toxicity issue. So as long as there's process, you know, that's the key thing. Okay, then we balance those needs and, the, and concerns. And the first thing that we're doing, and what we did on Monday night, um, for the 300 or so that were in attendance, um, <laughs> that we were until 11 o'clock at night, but um, the process is starting, and this is a good sign between what Ritter is doing and what the city is doing and what the county's interacting, is we're not necessarily going to um, have a, a meeting every day with this, but they are actively seeking for a way to provide to create less of an impact on where they are and potentially less of an impact on anywhere they might go and one you know when you have services like shower and laundry downtown that constitutes could be 40 visits per day 
um, of using that. If that service is taken away from that downtown and put on a mobile platform, which is one option that we're looking at, and moved to Novato on a Wednesday and to Sausalito for the anchor outs on a Thursday and to somewhere else that they can go to where the people are, it takes away the intensity that is in that one location. The mail services that are servicing about 150 um, clients right now, if those can be dispersed. The food pantry, there are some 50 different um, locations within San Rafael that distribute food. Does it need to be in that same location? So if we can disseminate those out so that this the, you don't have a lot of things happening all at the same time and all in the same place, we hopefully will see a decrease in some of the issues that are, that are taking place there. And going forward, should Ritter find another place outside of the city or in the county or wherever, what uses are going to be there and what's that going to look like? Because we, you're absolutely right. And I, I, am full, I don't want to pick up a problem. And Damon is saying, I don't want to pick up a problem and just move it somewhere else. That doesn't yeah, make it, sense. It's, it's not even an option. Right. And we've seen good examples. I mean, homeward bound. Right. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm all opportunity center again in Noah. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm all for listening to the needs and concerns of whoever the driving force is in Central Central Film. Maybe it's the Merchants Association. Maybe it's a big corporation that decides that they would like a, a better environment. But I also would like to balance that against our needs and concerns. Absolutely. So. John, you mentioned the concentration of services that are in San Rafael and the, the opportunities available. And it's my understanding that most of the services are concentrated primarily in San Rafael and some in Novato. Is there any way to, to see if, if other jurisdictions will step up and be able to offer something more in the future? Sure, there's always, there's always those options. And that's, there's nothing that's, like Damon said, there's nothing off the table. Um, yeah. and, and so, but you have to also look at that between the populations of Nevada and San Rafael, you constitute over 50% of the population of each county. So it would make some sense is that that's where most of the population of the homeless are between Nevada and San Rafael. I mean, some people have had for anchor outs, and, you know, but you, I, I agree. Are we going to take, like, it, like are, they, are, are other sites being considered? Outside of San Rafael. When I asked when I asked the director of Ritter Center a couple months ago, were you looking at other places? They had not. They had looked specifically in San Rafael, mm -hmm. and I followed up that question and said, "Why not expand it?" Yeah. Um, so I, <laughs> that's why I can ask that question. That being said, you know people will throw things out there that probably aren't ever going to happen, like with Branson moving out to Strawberry. There's a great campus in Ross. Yeah. Um, moving there, you know. Right. <laughs> okay. Um, <Yes>. You know. <laughs> Uh, it's well, not it's really central to a whole lot of things and transportation and whatnot, so you do have to have some logic around it and, and, and say where is it best. Well, and, and, and again, well, Justin, what's good is it though? I'm sorry, I just yeah. really yeah. have to no, no, because no, 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 sure. my kids are yeah. at their friend's house. <laughs> yes. um, I, I really love this one word you um, used, reimagine, and um, I think as long as we are providing fragmented services um, that are scattered geographically, uh, we will be pushing those smelly people that no one wants to be around from one address to another, and we're not going to solve the problem. The problem is that these people need additional help. For many cases, it's, it's a mental issue. And I, I love the idea of um, having a safe, place for them appealing to the you know the primary need of safety um, where they can um, sleep in a clean um, bed and not fear for their belongings or their health where they can shower where they can eat they can get their mail but also they can maybe uh, receive some kind of job training where we don't exactly. necessarily feed them all the time, but we will um, be able to have them fish for themselves at some point um, and, to, and to a certain extent. That's why, in my opinion, it's critical to combine the services because if you are addressed in a comprehensive way, then the reaction from the neighborhood will be very different because you're no longer uh, 
feeding the homeless or showering the homeless, you are actually uh, developing human beings and helping them, uh, you know, being a halfway, whatever you call it, I don't know, uh, but um, really uh, make sure that we can utilize their full potential. Yes, it's assisted, and yes, we taxpayers pay for it, but we're human beings and that's, that's what we do. Um, again, my big um, message for tonight, I guess, is the user-centeredness and uh, looking at um, the end user, what, what he, she needs, and looking at the problem from their perspective um, and providing services this way. Can I give this a brief history of what's going on? I, uh, I, years ago, in like 2010, I went to the gym with the Nautilus and applied some motion and applied a connect on board. Yeah. You know, like, right. I parked in the little parking structure at the bottom mm -hmm. after I pulled up shop. And I walked in the corridor, and I noticed more and more homeless people as I go by. And I'm like, what's going on? So I was just trying to figure out why is there an influx if unemployment is going down, then homeless is going up? Is there like sort of this word that gets around like, hey, it's Aaron Fell, you know, hey, guys, come over here, or whatever. I'm not trying to say that I should judge, I've never been in that position, so I'm not going right. to judge right. people, but I'm just, they, all of a sudden, I mean, they broke one of the windows of the gym. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, where did this, I don't understand how this came to yeah. a head. It, I think, it, you know, and I'm not necessarily an expert on that level, I would, I would think it's a combination of factors. Um, reflecting um, the complexity of the issue. I think you have, truly have some folks who uh, are now down on their luck. They lost their job, uh, they got priced out of their apartment, uh, so they're on the street. You have that aspect. Um, you have people who are addicted to serious drugs, and, and that's a growing epidemic uh, nationwide. Um, you have a mental health system where we do need to do more. And, and in fact, again, to reiterate, that's one area where the county really has to own it and lead. And we are uh, even instituting programs now where it's like mobile crisis units going to where these people are. I heard an amazing statistic recently. Literally, when you look at uh, who is causing most impacts in downtown center fell right now? It's about 35 to 50 people, exactly. um, which is amazing. It's about 10 percent of the, the yeah. homeless population. Is and so, one thing we're doing, it's based on a, on a San Mateo County model, is um, uh, what's called a homeless outreach team. Uh, again, literally identifying, naming those 35 to 50 people on the list and intensively addressing that. Uh, housing, services, et cetera. Uh, there's another piece, though, and that is I do think there is a segment, uh, and you're seeing it downtown, um, uh, oftentimes younger with dogs, um, that are uh, creating an environment where people are uncomfortable um, that's unacceptable as well, uh, wherever they may be from. Uh, so it's not a one-size-fits-all. I think we need to address it all, um, frankly. Um, but I think it's a combination of, yes, some people may be attracted right now to these services. Um, I imagine many are from here but for a variety of circumstances are in that situation. I'm a proponent of Laura's Law, um, for those who have been following that debate. I was on the losing end of a 4-1 vote not to implement Laura's Law right now. That would be an added tool in the toolbox for severely mentally ill uh, that would allow family members and service providers, if they meet the criteria, i.e. within the last couple of years have had a certain number of arrests and or hospitalizations, uh, created danger to themselves or others, can be brought before a judge. And in effect, it's a form of coercion. Take your medication. But the yes, 
Correct. Well, that's been around the Reagan years. And then yeah. the ASC, ACLU is what brought the, the lawsuit against that, not Reagan himself. Yeah, so you can't actually, we heard uh, from, the, from the back, you can't, one issue with this is you can't force them to take their medication unless they rise to the level of what's called 5150, which is imminent danger to yourself or others than potentially subject to a 72 hour hold. So right now, um, there, there is some uh, talk amongst the public of petitioning to have Laura's Law reconsidered. Um, I think that's one of the tools that we got right now. At the ABAG MTC meeting on Saturday, I heard one of the people there representing either ABAG or MTC and saying, I overheard him telling someone that he rode the smart train from Santa Rosa to Petaluma and there were about 30 homeless camps around the, along the railroad camp. Mm -hmm. uh, railroad camp. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's one of the things that smart's dealing with. Yeah, you it's know, a it's, it's a, they, when the actual passenger traffic happens, that is a safety issue that they will be dealing with, obviously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, my, my, my concern, one concern I haven't heard brought up is the community effects. Um, if we do locate homeless services up here, uh, the people that can't get in the programs or whatever, they're going to be out on the streets. Uh, we've had problems with homeless encampments, fires uh, in this area. We don't really have an enforcement staff to deal with it. We're, we're dealing with open space rangers and our fire chief goes up there. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I I mean, I don't want us to have to deal with drug use in our parks and, and homeless encampments. And, uh, I mean, it, it's going to be a problem if, if we don't look at this. Uh, Comprehensively. Well, well, and that's what we are. I mean, it's, yeah. it's, it's, and that was part of my yeah. list is what are their unacceptable impacts? You have right. to take all that into account. If you, if, you, if you look at it, if you just, as Damon said, probably a really good example is the Opportunity Center in Palo Alto where they had a downtown that was being taken over by homeless. And it's about a $50 million project to get what they did. And they had grants from the, the Palo Alto Community Foundation to do this. And they didn't really necessarily move it that far out of downtown. It's only about a third of away from where the downtown was. It's definitely out of there. It's definitely, it's not on the main street, University yeah. Avenue, but it's outside of there. That they've been able to create a situation where the impact has been significantly decreased on University Avenue in the downtown because there are services provided in a single location and there's things for them to do so they're not out wandering. There's the permanent support of housing that's there so they're not just going out. Is, is homelessness going to be ended? No, but it has been a significant decrease. Challenge location, challenge finances. Um, can it be done? Of course, but it's also time. That is not going to happen tomorrow or the next day. Um, you know, that's, that's a longer-term project, but it's not. It is something that we are looking at as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I, I've been concerned about the homeless the problem, and there, there is the physical aspect of Marin County having 80% open space. You have 80% open space. You have lots of opportunity for camping or encampment. So it is no um, no surprise that people take advantage of those opportunities whenever they have no uh, permanent shelter. Um, you are <coughs> talking about comprehensive wraparound services, essentially looking at all the aspects of the, of the needs. And that's one of the hallmarks of Laura's Law, is it requires comprehensive wraparound services, and uh, it has a lot of accountability. So this, this evening, I, or this afternoon, I read the analysis by, I believe it was RBC, the consulting firm, about why the county doesn't want to implement Laura's Law. Um, and it was, it was sort of a circular